seeing a lot with Jim Harbaugh and still potentially leaving, maybe not leaving. I, 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 I'm still, we talked about this a little bit last week, but I'm still in the thought that he's not leaving. And I've seen some things on essentially the rumors that are coming out are potentially leverage for the new contract, which to me also I don't understand because there's no need for him to have any leverage for a a contract because, sorry, I'm feeding my pup a a treat. Um, You accomplish everything you you set out to this year. Like this is, this isn't the, the COVID two and four season where you're underperformed and and things were just kind of a mess. I mean, it, it was a mess for everybody. We understand that, but this was the year where you won what 12 games this year, 12 and one, 12 and two, you had a great season. You beat Ohio State. You won the Big Ten championship. Beat Iowa in the in the the conference championship. I mean, I just I I'm someone who does not believe that Jim Harbaugh is doing this for leverage. To me, he just doesn't seem like that kind of guy. And and I also understand that he's not the one negotiating the contract. He has an agent. It would be my guess. I don't know for sure, but when you're making the type of money that Jim Harbaugh does you typically do have an agent. So I, I get that he has an agent who's who's representing him and in the negotiations, but I, I just don't I don't foresee Jim Harbaugh going through negotiations and and trying to create buzz for himself just to make more money at Michigan. I think he I think his contract should be renegotiated. And I, I think we can all agree on that because he performed well. He did everything that he, he wanted to do this year i'm sure they wanted to you know win the playoff game and and win a national championship but when you look at the season that they had it was a phenomenal season phenomenal season It, it there's really no negative you could say about about the season it was a it was a great season so for me i don't see why the administration of michigan would would be trying to play hardball with harbaugh because that's what he did is what they wanted. So why would you why would you try to punish him and, and not renegotiate the contract? I mean, we see multiple, multiple coaches signing ten year near hundred million dollar deals and for someone who just like I said, beat Ohio State, won the division, won the conference, and was in the playoff, one of the four best teams or most deserving that's that's the guy you want to make sure he's comfortable. You want to make sure you have that long-term commitment with Harbaugh. And I could see the flip side. I could see Harbaugh wanting to have that long-term commitment to Michigan as well. Sounds like the Raiders is is most of the rumored is rumored, you know, Jim Harbaugh is supposedly going there. It it listen, it could all be true and I could be way off base and and have no idea what's really going on cuz I I really don't. I'm guessing with all of this. I'm not dialed in. I'm not at Jim Beckler Hall. But to me, I, I just I find it very difficult to think that Jim Harbaugh did all of this work and also took all of the criticism because the first couple years it was like, okay, he, I mean, from the jump, Michigan was winning a lot of games, a lot of games. But once you got to the point where, you know, year three, year four, year five, that you're not beating Ohio State, the margin in those games is is getting bigger. And you're also watching your rivals go to Indianapolis and, and win the conference and, and win national championships and and play in the playoff. Right. You, he's, he was taking a lot of criticism. There were people that after the two and four season last year thought he should have been fired. So I, so you go from taking all of that criticism, the khaki pants and all that stuff, you know, people calling for your job last year to now this year, you win the conference, you have probably the number one pick uh, in Aiden Hutchinson. And and I think I saw David Ojabo mocked at like number 13, a top 10, top 13 pick in the NFL. And now this is the time that you want to leave and and go to the Raiders situation, which the Raiders... I think they have a good core to work with. Um, 
they got to figure out things with Derek Carr if they're going to extend him long term. But but nonetheless, I, I just I, I just find it hard that he went through what he did for the seven, eight seasons to get to this point to leave now. I I just find it very difficult when you look at the future, even the next two, three years down the road. You've got J.J. McCarthy, the, that that coveted five star quarterback that Jim Harbaugh really hasn't recruited out of high school. Let's Shea Patterson was a five star, played at Ole Miss and, and transferred to to Michigan. But Shea Patterson, I, in the time that he was here and played for Michigan, I don't think showed anything to what JJ has shown in just his first season in limited action. So you got the guy at quarterback. You've got plenty of talent coming back in the backfield. You've got Ronnie Bell coming back on the outside, along with the other guys on the on the outside. Like there's just so much to to look forward to, and I just find it difficult that he that he did all of this work, made all of these changes, just to leave and go to go back to the NFL. I could be wrong, but I I don't think there's any way he's leaving. So we'll we'll see what. Um, We'll see what happens. I will see if I can jump into a couple questions here. Um, Ryan Day to the Bears. That's interesting. He said he always hated the state of Ohio and doesn't want to coach against Michigan again. The truth is is the rumors. Let's see. I'm Jim, and I see Michigan doesn't care as much as he does. I'm going to Vegas easy. That uh, Rico, I mean that that's that is interesting. Um, I I do think Michigan cares. I and, and the reason I say that is I think the administration has done a really good job of giving him the budget that he needs and really just kind of getting out of his way like let it, and I, I think that's the most important thing you can do as an administration is to give me what I ask for give me what I need and get out of my way now the NIL thing that that's still kind of up there a little bit um it, it, as far as is Michigan doing all that they can with NIL <clears throat> I'm not going to say they are doing all they can with NIL but it's it's just so there is similar with the transfer portal. There's just been no guidance on it. And that's the part that I don't like that. I don't love is there just doesn't seem to be any real guidance on it. So it, it, I, I think Michigan, the administration has done a good job and done well for Jim Harbaugh that they have given him what he needs and they have gotten out of the way and let him do that. Uh, Rico also said, would you choose Mike Hart or the field as the next head coach? I think our current coach sees that the school is not dedicated to taking the next step. Uh, I would probably take the field. And it's not that I, I think Mike Hart is a really good coach. And I also thought it was crazy that Indiana ended up hiring him as the, as the, their running backs coach and not Michigan. I, I thought that was silly and that, um, that was just a missed opportunity, but I would, I would probably want someone with some head coaching experience as far as college, because there's just so much that, that you have to manage with position coaches, you know, recruiting, get, you know, get recruiting assignments and, and just understanding all of that. It, it, there's a, there's so much that goes into it and it's changing so much too with the transfer portal. Now you have to consistently be recruiting the players that you already signed like you have to always be recruiting consistently and constantly and and that for some guys it may be a lot to deal with and i and and who knows and it just like i said it may be a bit overwhelming for someone who's never been a head coach like i said i i i think mike hart is a phenomenal coach and you look at i i don't think it was a coincidence that the year that he gets here, your running backs are just as a group, probably top two, top three in the country. Um, I, I don't think that was a mistake. Um, 
Harbaugh is in a great position. Uh, he can go coach in the NFL for more money, no recruiting, more time with the family. That is that's understandable, and that and that's very true. Um, from everything I've heard, his all of his family for the most part is here, and uh, obviously with his dad is uh, is older than he is. So you talk about you know potentially uprooting, moving, which you know as a coach that's that's kind of part of your lifestyle, but. Would you want to leave what's essentially "quote unquote" home for you? I'm not sure, and I'm sure that's something that comes into play with the, um, you know, when it comes to your decision and and, and where you go. So it's uh, it, it, it's interesting. We will see what uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see. Luke Fickle would take the Michigan job because it's top job in college football, and he was slighted at Ohio State. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not Luke Fickle. I'm not close to him. So I don't know. Uh, I think he did get a bit of a raw deal at Ohio state, uh, as the interim coach, but, um, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. He may be an Ohio state guy in and out to where he's just like, I could never wear maize and blue. I don't know him that well. It, he seems to be doing a great job at Cincinnati. So, uh, I, I'm not quite sure. Not quite sure. Uh, uh, Tyndall says, seriously, Harbaugh is a much better NFL coach than he was at the college level. Just my two cents. I mean, it, it's hard to argue with his results, especially those first three years at San Francisco. They, you know, three straight NFC championships and went to the Super Bowl once. I mean, that's that's a very difficult thing to do. Very, very difficult thing to do.